what does that mean? Tell me a little bit about that. So as far as misuse about, and yeah, abuse? The, well, no, the medication. What are you helping? Yeah. What do you? What exactly does that mean? So MAT, known as medication-assisted treatment, mm-hmm. we're able to offer specialized doctors that sit down with these individuals and figure out what's going on in their world and then prescribe them medication that actually blocks. It's an antidote. So it blocks our opioid receptors. So the individuals that might be experiencing that active addiction or they may go out in the community, use a substance, whether it's an opioid, heroin, fentanyl, when they're under the influence of MAT, which might be buphonorphine, we have um, naltrexone, these are medications that block that receptor. So it's helping them get through the withdrawal process and actually come and show up to Keystone to our groups and get that treatment. A lot of the times we see without this MAT assistance program, individuals are experiencing the hardships of that withdrawal, which if anyone's ever experienced it, it is, it feels like beyond death. And so to get them that over that withdrawal process and still have them show up to group and get those necessary, necessary counseling skills and those coping strategies, they're at a higher success rate of getting into their recovery and preventing that relapse from happening in the future. Hmm. So it's kind of a recap of what our MAT is. So it sounds like on the prevention side, your job is basically to keep people from having to come into the Keystone, into the treatment programs at all. Yeah. Um, So when you're tackling addiction and you're tackling preventing it, what sort of triggers, what are the causes of addiction? You mentioned there's different substances people are addicted to. What's something that those people might have in common, though? The biggest thing, there's a couple factors when we talk about what can contribute to addiction. And the first thing is your family history, genetics. A lot of times people don't know if addiction runs in their family, whether it's through their parents, grandparents, or so on and so forth. And that is the same thing with mental health. So mental health and substance uh, abuse or addiction, those are things that can run in the family. So that's one factor that can contribute to somebody potentially developing the addiction. Another fact are your choices. So before addiction takes place, choices have to happen. And that might be the misuse or abuse of an alcohol, a prescription pill, any type of substance out there. Over time, when that misuse and abuse leads to a dependency, that's when addiction starts to develop. So the choices are our second factor. And really the third one comes down to your environment. That could be peer pressure. Do you live in an area where substances are easily accessible, readily available in the community? That can play a role. If family members have you know, it readily around in the household, the environment plays a huge role. So those are three factors, genetics, choices, and environment that can contribute to addiction. 